Hey there, I'm Source Make, and welcome to the video on editing Bitbucket pull requests and squashing git commits. Now in the previous video, which will be linked below, we learned how to make pull requests on Bitbucket using the branching method. And we got some feedback from the demo that we did that the project owner agrees that dolphins are the nicer fish compared to sharks, but they don't agree that ice cream is tasty. So they want us to remove the line about ice cream before they actually merge our branch into the main project branch. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. Basically, what we want to do is we want to overwrite some of the commits that we previously did for the branch so that this pull request automatically updates. And this is opposed to actually making a brand new pull request, which would be bad practice. We, would, we don't want to do that. We want to just update this current pull request. So the steps for doing that is going to be right here on my website. We're going to be going through it on this video, and we're going to be doing it for this example. And you can find this link, a link to this page, below this video, and there will be links to everything below there. So you can click those links. You can bookmark this page if you want to. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button for this YouTube channel. Thanks. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we made the previous pull request as you saw in the previous video and now we care about editing it because we got some feedback that we need to. This is a very real thing. So um, here's what we have to do and I was kind of doing this, I was testing it out so just ignore what you just saw. Uh, don't worry about that. But the first thing that we need to do is on Bitbucket, do I need to make this bigger for you? Yeah, I can make it a little bigger. On Bitbucket, look for the source code for your branch. And we can find this pretty easily, actually, if we go to right here on the pull request. If you look at the commits, you'll see all the commits that we did. I'm going to open this in a new tab. We're just going to pick any commit. And we'll view the source of that commit. And it actually really doesn't matter because we're going to be, um, we're on the current branch, but it, do it doesn't matter too much. So we're going to copy this git clone command, though, because we actually need to clone this repository. And we're going to open a terminal on our local computer for the cloning. Of course, any terminal can work. Right now, I'm on Windows 10, and I'm about to turn this into a Linux terminal, just like that. And we're going to clone this. So we're cloning this project. We're going to CD into it in the terminal, and we're going to look at this right here in the actual folder. And the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we are on the correct branch. So we want to check out onto the branch that our pull request is for. Now, if you remember from the previous video, that branch is documentation slash faves. Make sure you check out to whatever branch you make. So let's do that. Git checkout, and the branch name is documentation slash faves. Okay, great. So that actually worked. It's a little weird when you see these things pop up. You don't know what it says. So now our code reflects the actual branch that we care about. And in our local project, what we want to do is make the changes that we care about. So the owner gave us feedback that they don't like this line about ice cream. So voila, it's gone. Uh, it's exactly how the owner wants it to be. And we need to add and commit these changes. So let's go ahead and git add period. And we're just going to write this generic message right here. We're not even going to give a good uh, commit message. And I'll show you why. The reason is we want to squash the git commits together. So um, there's some numbers involved here. Uh, for our current change, we just made one commit. But if you look at the git log for this project, there are four commits that we see, and there are three that we care about. So this is the commit that we just made. There was that other commit where we updated the word sharks to dolphins. And there was the first commit where we actually wrote that line about ice cream. Now, what we want to do to make this pull request automatically update, and if you look at the pull request right now, I'll show you just so it's all clear, you see that this line about ice cream is right here. Um, we want to squash all of these three commits together so that the pull request automatically updates. And we can do that using the reset command. Now, this is the part of the video where I remind you that everything that I do on my websites and on GitHub and everything is under the MIT license, which basically means you can have all of my code, but if something breaks, it's not my fault. So make sure you do this with a grain of salt. Uh, I don't want you to like mess up any commits. So make sure you're counting your numbers very carefully. Always be careful with these things. You don't want all your hard written code to actually just go down the drain. And we're going to squash these commits together. Like I said, that just means we're going to merge them. So if we come on Windows, you can do it. The command is git reset 
soft head and this tilde and then we have to put a number. Now the number is going to be the number of commits in your pull request which if you go back let's see let's go back right here if you go back to this page was it this page uh no it wasn't this page let's let's go up here um the number of commits in this pull request you'll see right here really easily so we have two commits for this pull request plus the number of commits that we just did on our local computer, which was one. So our number right here for this project is going to be three. We're going to be squishing these three commits together. And we just press enter. So that squashes the git commits together. So if you do a git log now, you'll see that, uh, oh wait, we didn't commit it. So that squishes them together, but we still need to do the commit. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So let's do a new commit message. And this time we're just going to make uh, the message say dolphins instead of sharks. Just to be descriptive of the overall change, the pull request should now reflect. So now we need to push this commit to the, um, you know, back over, uh, let me type it out. So we're gonna do a git push origin. We're gonna do this plus command. This plus command means instead of making a new branch, it's going to overwrite the existing branch. And we need to type our branch name, which in this case is going to be documentation slash faves. So when we do that, and I'm going to show you the magic right here. So see right here, if we go to the documentation slash faves, you'll see that ice cream is tasty. When we push this, and I have to type my password. I hope I just typed it right. I feel like I didn't. Oh, I guess I did. Okay. So this is going to push our changes and overwrite this existing branch. So when we refresh this page, did it work? Did I do the right thing? I think I did. Oh, uh, I, oh wait, okay, now it's gone. It took a second, but now it's gone. So that did that for this, um, you know, the branch itself, it updated the branch itself. But when we look at the pull request, if we go back to it, now we'll see if we look at the changes that that ice cream uh, is tasty line is gone. That's because it got overwritten in our previous commit. And now if you look at the actual commits for this message, instead of there being two, there's just this now one commit from what we just squashed. So that's basically it. Um, now, well, we're not done. Let, let me uh, make sure not to say that we're done. We have to go back to this pull request and now we need to edit it. And what you should do is you should update the description and ice cream is gone. So we're just gonna get rid of that. And we could even make the title a little more descriptive now just say dolphins shark. Uh, actually, it would be sharks, dolphins. It's good to update this stuff because people are going to need to know. So you can update this and you can also leave a comment in the actual pull request. So you can say something like, I removed the lines, the line about ice cream. You can do that. And just like that, uh, we edited this pull request. And it was really simple. So just to reiterate one more time, you clone the repository, you go to the branch for your pull request, which is why I mentioned so much in the last video that doing the branching method is important for doing your pull request. Um, we went to that branch, we made the changes to the branch that we wanted to, we added and committed it, then we squashed all the commits together. And by doing that and then pushing those, well, you, you have to make the commit for that. And by um, you know pushing that, and overriding the previous branch, you automatically update the pull request that's there. And that's how, you know, that, that's how it gets done. Then you can update the actual Bitbucket pull request that um, exists, you know, the text here. And just like that, you can edit and get feedback and work with projects just like that really easily on Bitbucket. So, um, yeah, once again, uh, this web page, if you don't want to memorize all that, you can come to this web page and bookmark it. That's what I would do if I were you. Um, the link will be below this video. You can also subscribe, leave a comment, like if, if, if you like this video. Uh, there are links to my social media on this page. You can follow me on Twitter, stuff like that. I'm Soy Make. Thanks for watching. Happy editing your pull request. Hopefully you don't get too much feedback and people just like your code.